Somebody shout, how great, how great is our God? Is he great today? How great, how great, how great, how great. How great, how great, how great. Somebody say, how great, how great, how great, how great. How great, how great, how great, how great. 
How great, how great, how great, how great. How great, how great, how great, how great is our God. Oh, come on and give God glory. We serve a mighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, God. You're great, powerful, awesome, and mighty. How great, how great, how great. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, God above, never beneath, only to gird your people up will you be our foundation. Our Savior, the only foundation that can be laid. Our God, how great. Great in faithfulness. Great in love. Great in mercy. How great is our God. Unmatchable. Beyond describable. But yet reachable. Thank you. For allowing. Man to be able to reach you. To be able to commune with you. To be in favor with you above the angels. Even though we have been made lower, even as our Christ, that we might suffer. But as he suffered in the flesh, so we arm ourselves likewise. For if we suffer with him, we know that we shall also reign with him. Therefore, God, we give you praise. Ah. And as we come in faith unwavering, making our requests known by faith in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that your word can go forth with healing in its wings. Send your word, Lord, into those that, Lord, are homebound those who have chosen to stay home those who are looking out with concern for others because they have contracted the, vi the flu or the virus and are coughing don't want anyone to be offended help us Lord help us all we'll trust you Lord in every way. Now, Father, have your way. Send your anointing. Send your anointing, God. Send your anointing from heaven. That, Lord, your anointing will destroy every yoke, Lord, even now. Cause your word, oh, God, even now to be put in place in our mind that we might speak words in clarity. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, minister to someone, minister to everyone. For we're going to cast your seed. We're going to sow it. Wherever it falls, let it bring increase. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Take the word of God in your hand while you're still standing.
And if you will turn to the epistle of Romans, chapter number one. Somebody say, help him, Lord. I, I, look, ain't no shame in my game. I know where my help comes from. And I don't mind soliciting others' prayers that the Lord will help me. Thank you. Amen. Romans. Chapter number one. Amen. If you found that, say amen. And we'll begin reading at verse number 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath shewed it unto them. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds, and foot, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more, than the creator who is blessed forever. Let the church say amen. Hmm. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. <laughs> Choosing to see the invisible things of God. Somebody say choosing. 
to see the invisible things of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right. Amen. And so as we are here in Scripture, we just want to, amen, speak to your hearts briefly uh, concerning the time that we live in. I don't need to go into a long historical account of what's happening now because we all have a sense of where things have been, where things are with some uncertainty and with a whole lot of uncertainty of where things are going. But one thing we can stand on for sure, and that's God's word, God's truth. For God's word, his truth, is also like him. It is unchangeable. One psalmist declared in his writing in the book of Psalms that God's word is settled in heaven. It is established. It is placed in a position to stay and not to be moved. God's word, as he has no variableness, his word, as many will find themselves trying to say the great, spaces or the gray areas. There are no gray areas in God's word. It, is, it either is you do it or you don't. It's either you believe it and receive it as it is written or you don't. It's not going to change because you can't see the true colors. The true color is it's true. And one thing that is sure about truth, it will make a man free. For ye shall know the truth, Jesus declares in St. John, chapter number 8. And he says that when you know it, it shall make you free. He goes down a few more verses and says that it is the Son, the Son of God, that will make you free, and you shall be free indeed. I hear John as he pens First uh, Ch St. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If God does not change and the word is God, then surely it confirms what we're saying now that the word will never change because God never changes. Can I get a witness? Uh, maybe I need to go like this. I've tried him and I found out that Jesus is just all right. He's all right because he remains faithful. He's all right because what he said, then he does. One thing that you'll learn, he may not come when you want him. But when he comes, he's always on time. If he say he's coming, there won't be no excuse why he don't show up. But we got to wait. I'm going to go to the van now. When you call in for the van and you are sure that the van going to pick you up, 
then you should be what? Waiting and ready. May not come when you feel like he should be there. But wait, because what? He should show up. <laughs> the van should show up. But one thing about God, there's no uncertainty about him fulfilling his word. And there is no uncertainty about the effect of God's word. There's nothing more reliable than the word of God. Uh, I believe we can find in the book of Psalms, amen, where he declares the specifics about the word of God and to give you a security unlike no other. Psalms 19, he declares the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Why don't man want to put their trust in the word? Why would men seek after other treasures than to seek after the treasure that's greater price than of rubies? For he said even in verse 10 that his word is more to be desired than gold. Yea, than much fine gold and sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. My, 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 my. What a date. Amen. What a date. And it is so sweet and enriching, the word is, because it has the invisible things of God in it. And only because of God's grace does he openly Make those things, those invisible things known. We're living in a time that we are in today that we must constantly and intentionally ask ourselves the question, do I wish to see the things of God more and more clearly that I'm seeing them now, or am I satisfied right where I am? Lord, you don't need to show me no more. I got enough. The old honey that I didn't taste it already has given me a sweet tooth. Hallelujah, but I don't want no more because I don't want no cavity. God ain't going to give you no cavity, baby. Get all the sweet honey you can get from him. His word is so good and sweet. I heard one writer declare, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. I heard another one say, Hallelujah, that his word, amen, is sweet. The song said, Jesus is sweet. Sweet I know. Can I get a witness? Is he sweet? I wonder, are we hungry today? And are we thirsty today? Certainly, Matthew, in his writing of St. Matthew chapter 5, declares uh, that he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, the same shall be filled. Are you hungry for righteousness, God's righteousness? Are you hungry and thirsty for God? For the invisible things of God. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you wish to see these things? Ask day to day. Do I want God to show me more 
Uh, see, the danger in that is the more God shows you, the more he shows you you. And the more he shows you you compared to his word, the more we are brought out of comfort zones and safe places that we might experience transition and transformation. You can't be transformed staying in the same place. There has to be movement. There has to be action. And that's God's actions that we are looking for to make us to be more like God. Christ. In this, amen, we find the secret things because the number one secret thing and the number one invisible thing speaks of the salvation of God, speaks of Christ himself. But even in these things, we must admit, amen, that in this world, there are so many intriguing and fascinating things that we have got to see, ain't it? Amen. You know there's some stuff you just got to see. Do you really got to see it? One thing man certainly got to see and must get it in their mind and their heart, and that's I got to see what the will of God is for my life. I hear Jesus in the sixth chapter of St. Matthew in verse number 33 where it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Hallelujah. The things that you see, the things that you can smell, the things that you can touch, the things that you can hear, those, those things that are tangible, all these things shall be added unto you. But he says, seek after those invisible things, the graces of God. Seek after those things that uh, would be pleasing to God. Amen. Even though they're pleasing to God, how many know it's not always pleasing to man? It's not always pleasing to you. Because some things that would be pleasing to me Surely God wouldn't have it in his presence at all. Hmm. But do we choose to see the invisible things of God? The world, there are many fascinating things to see, people, places, and things to experience day to day. Our minds are open to the world of discovery. How many of y'all are looking to learn new things every minute of the day? If you weren't, you wouldn't be Googling and you wouldn't be surfing. Everybody is trying to discover something else. Everybody is looking for something else that will tantalize their proclivities uh, because the things of this flesh want more and is never satisfied. The human nature, amen, the proclivity or the, uh, the instinct of sinful mankind, it causes him to seek after those things that are pleasurable to the, fe to the flesh and to our feelings. So our minds continue to stay open for worldly discovery. Somebody say, guard your mind. Guard your heart. Hallelujah, you got to put safeguards on your eyes and your ears too. And somebody say every now and then, which is often, you need to put your hand over your mouth and guard your lips and tongue. It's because when our minds become open, we become, uh, if you will, we become uh, uh, victim to parasites. We become victim, amen, to that one who is called the, roar, the one as a roaring lion, whom he's seeking, whom he may devour. Who is he seeking after? Ones who have an open mind. That's all we want today. Open up your mind. Open up your mind and see the wonderful things. Uh, learn new things. But these things, do they lead you to Christ or do they draw you further from Christ? 
Do they cause your heart to seek after the things of God more than the things that are temporary? Ah, but I would fret to say many times we seek after temporary satisfaction. But one thing I found about God, he has an eternal satisfaction. He has a satisfaction that's guaranteed. So as our minds, amen, are seeking to look for new things, amen, we must understand that the paranormal, amen, is not something that we ought to indulge in, amen. I know we like horror movies, and I know uh, myself I like crime and, and action movies. I, I like to see the police cutting up, and I like to see guns and shooting and all of that. But don't you know that's a way that we open up ourselves and has always been a way to open men's minds to a thing that will cause them to become desensitized. And so as we see it even in our day to day, men are becoming more desensitized because we have opened ourselves up to more worldly discovery. And so now to see some things in real life, it doesn't bother men because they have been entertained for so long. Entertained on the boob tube, if you will. Ah, we've been entertained in the pulpit, hallelujah, to where folk, amen, have become desensitized to the truth of God's word. Oh, but the word of God, hallelujah, has never changed. Uh, the actors may change, amen, and the positions, amen, may go out of style on the set. But one thing is for sure, the invisible things of God are still available to those who seek after them. It is here, amen, we must understand with cyber networking going on and uh, there's a sense of ungodliness and unrighteousness that is welling up in the world and in the church today. How in the world can somebody believe that they're saved and still yet enjoying all of the fruits of the world? This is where Romans comes in and he begins, Paul says, but I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I find that this gospel that Paul continues with is not only speaking of the virgin birth and the death and the burial and resurrection and the coming of Christ, amen, as the fulfillment of, amen, the gospel message, but to preach the righteousness of God and the unrighteousness of man and his ungodliness, which fosters to them, amen, the wrath of God. Ah, the gospel of Jesus Christ is what has been given to man that he might escape the wrath of God. But we find in Romans, as Paul writes to the church, those who are sanctified, those that know the truth, and yet he declares to them what it is to live in unrighteousness and then to find out that even those who should be righteous are enjoying the livelihood of those who live ungodly and unrighteous. Oh, somebody say he preaching about the church. I'm preaching about the world. I'm preaching the word of God as it lays before us in Romans chapter 1. Even in the midst of these things, it is yet, amen, a forewarning that we must gird ourselves up, amen, in our most holy faith, amen, praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, build yourself up, hallelujah, because these are the latter days and the truth, amen, must prevail. Uh, why? Because you're not dancing, amen, to the piping uh, or the playing of the instrument. Hallelujah. Why? Because of desensitization uh, or because of a lack uh, of choosing to experience more of the invisibility of God's things. 
Jesus. Ah, there's so much yet more for you and I. Tell your neighbor there's more, there's more, there's more. Whatever you have received of God thus far, don't be satisfied because there's all so much more. Even as I consider this, I hear the scripture wailing in my ear. But as it is written, I have not seen, talking about invisible things, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love Jesus today? Then just think about there's so much more, but I have to choose, hallelujah, to see it. Hallelujah, to choose to see it. Uh, Jesus asked a question to his disciples that when the Son of Man returns to the earth, will he still find faith? Will he find people still believing in the things of God? Still believing on the word of God? Will he still find people who are tending faithfully unto the word and the things of God? I'd like to say yes because there are some that are full of faith. There are still those who are going from faith to faith. If that's you, you ought to shout, that's me, Jesus. I'm living for you faith to faith. For the scripture declare, for the just shall live by faith. Amen to God and faith helps us, amen, when we choose to see the invisible things of God, it's faith that openly makes them known. It is here we understand then the writing of Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the invisible things of God. And the only way to take a hold of them is to have faith Amen. Knowing that God's word will surely come to pass. God is a God who's full of good things. Everything that's good comes from above. And with there being no variableness, if he gave out good gifts on last year, he has good gifts for us today as long as we choose to see the invisible things of God. The apostle here in Romans chapter 1 goes on to inform us that God enables man to know, amen, about the invisible things of God, even the deep things of God. He deals with us on a natural plane and he deals with us on a spiritual plane. He gives us wisdom which is from above. Amen. And with this wisdom, we are able to live our lives, amen, governed by his truth. And when God's truth is leading and guiding you, hallelujah, the scriptures say we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Why? Because his spiritual wisdom is given to us by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And not only will he bless you in this life, but somebody say, I'm looking for the blessing to come. Life eternal because you have received of the invisible gift of God's grace and truth which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm so glad that God allowed me to see what so many other men cannot see and that is that God who is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent that God who is the creator and originator of all things, that God who is the one that sits high and looks low has had enough thought about you and I to save you, to show you the invisible things of his grace and his mercy. It's here you have found salvation. If you don't have salvation today, you need to know that it is in Jesus Christ. He is the one who is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's here we understand when the writer uh, the says in 1 Corinthians that we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks 
selfishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. God only shows them that will believe. I don't know what people are waiting on when all God is saying, just believe my word. Just trust in what I have said. Even though you can't see it with your natural eye, all you got to do is believe on it. That's your choice to see the invisible. What God will do is show you he's pleased because the scriptures also declare in Hebrews chapter number 11, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he a man is. I can't see him but by faith I see the invisible things of God. He is God and beside him there is none other. He is my help. He is the one that upholds me with his right hand. He is the one that formed all things and created those things that we see now. It is because of him amen that we move live and have our being. Somebody shout I know it was God. Hallelujah thank you for revealing to me uh, your wisdom and the power it is here amen that we even like to know amen what is it God that is so special about the invisible things uh, it is amen that these invisible things of God hallelujah are those things which are unseen or that cannot be seen and we know Oh, Christ, who is the Alpha and the Omega, he is the beginning of all things. He is the one that nobody, everybody doesn't believe in because they can't see him. They can't touch him. But how many are in this place that can say, I know he's real because I believed on him. Now I feel him in my hands and I feel him in my feet and I can feel him all over over me and when you can't feel him it's faith that says he is because if he didn't show himself to be real to you you wouldn't be in here now but don't stop here because God has so much more to show you God has so much more that if you would trust him then you would be like Abraham who even when he heard the word of God that he would be a father of many nations amen it is said that he amen heard these words before him whom he believed even God that quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were ah we used to talk like that when we had faith we will call those things that weren't as though they were is there anybody still willing to choose to see the invisible things of God then that means we choose to believe that what God's word has declared it will come to pass if he said he's going to bless your going out and your coming in it don't matter how broke your pocket is you need to know you're blessed of God why because he knows how to manipulate he knows how to manipulate situations that the devil has tried to work against you that's why I believe the scripture says that there is no weapon that is formed against us that will prosper nor is there any tongue that will rise against us uh, that we shall not bring into judgment tell your neighbor I cannot deny oh my God and because he is then I know Oh, amen, that he will not leave himself without a witness. It is in the book of Acts, if you will, in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts. It's here, amen, when Paul, amen, was accosted by those in Lystra. It was here, if you will, that they began to move 
to another city. And while they were in that city, there was somebody that was sick and Paul healed them. And when they healed him, then they began to worship Paul and Barnabas uh, as gods, Greek gods, if you will, calling Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. In essence, it was the same factors of Romans chapter 1 that when men choose to reject the invisible things of God and the knowledge of truth they'll believe a lie and when one believes a lie they open themselves to an open mind and able to receive anything but truth and that's where the wrath of God comes because when men reject truth they live ungodly ways but I'm so glad that Jesus is still a savior for those that will call upon him. It's here Paul says don't be like the world. Don't be like those who are foolish to the truth of God. Don't worship me and Barnabas for we are but men with like passions but it's God who deserves the praise because he has not left himself without a witness what do you mean man goes around and declares that God can't be real all they gotta do is look at the rain did y'all see the rain today all you got to do is look at the natural thing verse 17 says nevertheless he left himself without witness in that he did good. Did God do good to anybody in here? Anybody that woke up this morning sinner or saint? God was good to you because he allowed you to see another day uh, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven. Yes he did and fruitful seasons. Hallelujah fulfilling our hearts with food and gladness. We we're living in a time now where we see famine all around the world. But don't you know there's more than enough food to fill everybody's stomach. But people choose what they choose. I don't know about you, but if I had to starve, there's so many restaurants that got to throw their food out. There's so many animals who won't even eat their own dog food. How can you starve? You starve because of choice. And how can a man starve spiritually? Because of choice. God's word shows us things that you never will find in a natural world until he proclaims it. So when God tells you to go left, that's where your blessing is. You can't make your own mind up and go to the right. You'll miss what God has for you. But God has already provided for you. And I don't know, there are some that are worried about the report of men concerning a recession. I don't know about you and the God that you serve. But God has showed me something about the invisible things of God. That no matter what the world goes through, God said, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk right before me. What are you saying? I'm convinced that God has some blessings that you haven't even depended on. He has some blessings that you have not seen. He has some more strength. Hallelujah that you need to tap into. But you got to choose to receive of those invisible things the power of God working in your life tell your neighbor neighbor you ain't seen nothing yet 
Uh-huh. Do you believe that? You know that's what we used to say. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. In essence, you're telling them, have faith in the invisible things of God concerning your life. If he said he gonna make you the head and yet you're underneath as the tail, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on to God's word because it's only in a matter of of moments that God's going to bring down one and set up another. Why? Because God is the sovereign God. What you see is not always what you get. You got to trust God for what you can't see. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to believe that God's holy word will not fail for the just shall live by faith how you live in the day are you believing on the promises of God the just shall live by faith and all of the promises are in him yea and amen somebody say I believe what God says he will do I don't know about you but when I got faith I'm well in my body. I don't know about you, but when I got faith, I can stand up in the face of the enemy and declare I'm more than a conqueror. When you got faith, you can stand before the doctor and say that I am well. He said, let the sick say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Your house is in shambles, but what God said, he said if you would believe on him and follow him, hallelujah, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. It may look like don't nobody want to serve the Lord in your house, but will you believe? the invisible things of God because when you do you keep on praying God turn my husband turn his heart around Lord soften the hardness of my son's heart Lord move them folk who are taking my child on a trip of no return I can tell you as a living witness won't he do do it. He'll turn that life around. It didn't look like you was going to make it out of that trouble. But look at you sitting here all free. Look at you sitting here looking all strong and mighty in God. You ought to have a praise that comes out of your mouth and say I'm one of them that believe God for the invisible things. I didn't see it when God said it, but I, I'm a living witness that God did it. God made a way. I said when they were in, hallelujah, that journey, as it left from Egypt, hallelujah, and they went on following the man of God. They got to a certain point and they looked on one side and there was the plains, the desert if you will, and they looked on another side and they were hedged in by the forest and they looked on the front side and there was this big body of water called the Red Sea and then they looked behind and what did they see they saw Pharaoh and his army oh Moses ah Moses I'm glad somebody was with Moses that believed to see the invisible things of God for they were praying for Moses I know they were raising his arms up when his arms got tired I could see the mothers of Zion oh I see the invisible things of God 
Pharaoh think his army's got us because it looks like nowhere to go. But I know the great God of Zion. He is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. It look like no way of escape. But somebody say Jesus. He is our way of escape. They hoped in the word of God. And so with Pharaoh behind. And it looked real dirty. They looked on and saw the force and the plane. They said, Moses, we ain't got no boats. Moses, we ain't got no raft. Moses, we ain't even got a plank to go over to the other side. But I, I hear God say to Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The salvation of God was invisible. But didn't he make a way when there was no way? Overnight, hallelujah, he caused the cloud, hallelujah, to turn into a pillar of fire. The cloud stayed between Pharaoh and Egypt while God made a way out of no way. And then at night, he caused the pillar of fire to be between Israel. And the Pharaoh of Egypt. At the same time, the invisible things of God, the invisible things of God, hallelujah to God, he began to blow. Somebody say, blow, blow, blow. Blow on that situation because it don't look like God's going to move, but he's already, I said he's already working it out. You got to tell yourself, self, you got to seek God for the invisible things. You got to seek God who is the one who is your salvation. You got to seek God when you can't see nothing else. You got to see the invisible things of God when they're in your ear talking all of that negativity. Yeah, pastor don't know what he's doing. Pastor don't know where he's going. The leader is all confused. The devil is confused, and you're confused until you can see the invisible things of God. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and it doesn't care what the CDC got to say about it. It doesn't matter what the president of the United States got to say about it. Upon this rock, I will build my church. It look like the gates of hell have come against it. It may look like the gates of hell are pulling it down with strongholds. But you got to believe to see the invisible things of God. He's getting ready to turn it around. He's getting ready to pick you up. He's getting ready to change your life. He's getting ready to move your enemy. He's getting ready to stretch your life in a way that you never thought could ever happen that he can bring you into a land flowing with milk and honey. Stand still and see the invisible things of God. Isn't that a wonder? You want to see the wonders of this world. You want to see the wonders on a computer. You want to go places and see things that you've never seen when God has so many invisible things to show you. Oh, the disciples, they had it. They were satisfied. And Jesus said, I want you all to go out of here two by two. And he sent them out. 
they had they had an experience. They was with Jesus. They, they was happy. But when they went out, they saw some invisible things happening, coming to fruition. Oh, when they saw they was able to pray for folk and demons be cast out. When they was able to lay hands like Jesus did on the sick and they recovered. They came back. Oh, the invisible things of God have manifested themselves. We have cast out devils. We have done all these things. Wow. Don't you want a wow experience? When the last time you had a wow experience? One with God. Oh, the preacher. Oh, church, you've been conditioned. It's time to shake yourself. The pandemic gave everybody a chance to shake themselves and for the preachers to shake themselves and get back in there and preach the truth. So what if they don't dance? And so what if they don't want to hear it? Preach it anyway. Well, we the church and we're supposed to be edifying. This is edifying because it's God's word. We've been conditioned at home and in the church to where some of us don't even believe in doing a lot of things that we have done in church. You need to shake yourself. You need to shake yourself. It is still comely for the saints to give thanks unto God. That's his word. It is still proper to praise God. Because when you do the scripture that has not changed, declare that he dwells. In the midst of the praises of his people. And if he's been faithful to bring us out. To bring us in. To take us out. And then to bring us in. And to bring us out. And to bring us in. And we still can stand up and say. For the Lord our God is great. And his name is greatly to be praised. It's because we choose to see the invisible things of God. My life is in his hand. I don't know everything he has planned for my life. But I choose to believe the invisible. You know what the invisible is? It's all good. It's all good. Because you know why? Those that put their faith and trust in God, there is no bad luck. I used to come to church to change my luck. I couldn't hit a lick, strike one either. And I said, well, it's time to go to church so my luck can change. And sure enough, I come to church and Minister Beverly Reeves would be singing and Deacon would be playing that organ and I'd be sitting there just crying. And don't give my life to the Lord and get up and leave in sin after God was waiting to show me the invisible things. My luck changed, though. Got back up. I was hitting, striking. And it went down. Every time it went down, I come back to church. But I found out once I got saved, it ain't luck. It's the grace of God. It's the righteousness of God that he gives as a gift to men. Even when they don't deserve it. And he shares and allows us to have time. 
But I consider bad luck having to be saved. I found out through the scripture. And we know all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. And we know all things, what? Because they're the invisible things that are working for man when he don't even see them. So he makes even that which was bad work for your good. Isn't that a smart God? The all-wise God, our Savior. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you have revealed the invisible things of yours to us. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Lord, you thought enough of us to give to us by grace your truth that we might live and walk therein. Now, God, today your word is going forth. It shall not return to you void. I pray that we have completed our assignment and that it has been completed and sealed with love. Now, God, you know what you're doing. We're believing in the invisible things of God concerning these lives. You will work it all together for good, even eternal salvation. Now unto you, O God, who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless with exceeding glory. To you, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. As Sister Marquis is coming.